Okay, uh, let's see number six. A 42 year old male with a leg mass, and clearly we got a huge slab of tumor here with, with that's just been cut out. So this is obviously a large, deep, deep mass. Um, if it, if it was big enough that we could cut a whole square of tumor out, and um, it is a collagenous, very pink, and um, although the other thing is pink, sometimes you can think of muscle. But if we go down to closer power here, higher power, we can see that in between the spindle cells, there's actually fibers, little tiny collagen fibers that we can see, little threads of collagen. So that tells us that what we're dealing with is actually something that's making collagen. So probably fibroblastic or myofibroblastic, or maybe you could think of neural also, but probably not smooth muscle. And here, the cells are very bland. Look at that, so bland and benign looking. See if I can get it in focus. They just like have almost no atypia, no pleomorphism. It's very hypocellular, no mitoses that we're seeing. Let's go back to low power. There are some branching kind of staghorn vessels, like you can see in solitary fibrous tumors. The these areas, this area here is very pink. Over here, it seems to get a little bit more cellular. Still not very cellular, but there's kind of a variability that some areas are a little more cellular like this, and other areas are less cellular, more kind of hyalinized and sclerotic. And then, let's see if I can still find areas. This is a little bit of an old slide that's beginning to be washed out. But these areas here have a little bit of bluish myxoid background. The blue is a little harder to see on this slide because it's a little older. So we've got kind of a pink, collagen rich tumor that's got a little bit of myxoid area has some cell areas that are a little more cellular and others that are a little less cellular and very bland nuclei so any ideas what this might be fibromyxoid sarcoma yeah this is low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma also known as evans tumor after harry evans who first described it in the 1980s and these tumors are real important to know that they're relatively rare but they're deceptively benign appearing they they're sarcomas, but they don't have any of the features or, that we usually associate with sarcoma. Pleomorphism, necrosis, mitosis, all that stuff. They lack that with rare, very rare exceptions, but usually they look so benign, they look like a neurofibroma, like a perineurioma. Maybe sometimes they can swirl and look a little like a DFSP, solitary fibrous tumor. They can look like a lot of those things, but they don't usually look malignant. So recognizing that variability in the collagen rich and sometimes more myxoid. This one doesn't have very much myxoid change at all. And then also seeing that some areas are a little bit more cellular, even still, they're not like sheets of cells. They're still spaced apart by collagen. And then other areas are very hypocellular and like kind of sclerotic collagen like that. That's the key. And then you can use an immunostain MUC4, M-U-C-4. MUC4 is gonna be positive in this tumor. And um, it's a, it can stain a few other things, but it's a, overall, when it looks like this, it's a very specific marker if, in the proper histologic context. And there is a molecular abnormality between the FUS, F-U-S gene, and the CREB, 3L1 or 3L2. Just remember FUS, CREB, and that's enough to remember. Um, that will be positive. But now that we have MUC4, I usually don't need to test the molecular. When I see these, the pattern and then the MUC4 expression is usually enough to make the diagnosis. So that's low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma really important tumor because it can mimic a lot of benign things and um and you don't want to mistake that i have a full-length video about this on my youtube channel if you want some uh, to see other examples